going back, so I grew up in the Midwest, Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota. Uh, my mom was a garage sale mom, which means like we go shopping for garage selling every Saturday morning, right? So I learned to like always buy like the cheapest thing and try to negotiate lower. So that started there. Then in college, I rented an apartment, rented out all the bedrooms in it, and I was living for free. I slept on the couch, so basically I was homeless. And then later, I slept in a car, which was weird just because my... I had an overnight job and so I was like, well, I don't even need a place to live. I'll just live in my car basically. And I had a place like a, a bad apartment to store my crap, but I just like slept in my car every day. Uh, that was actually really fun. And then, uh, then that turned into later. I bought a house, uh, just like a crappy little the cheap. I didn't know anything about real estate. It's like, it was cheaper than renting was to buy a little, you know, fixer upper. Uh, and that was 2007. So all the lenders were like, Oh, you got no credit, no job, uh, you know, or good job. You got no, anything going for you. Yeah. You're approved for whatever you want. Like they were just like crazy lending. Right. So I bought a house, I fixed it up and uh, sold it and made like 20 grand. And I was like, dang, that was more money than I made all year. And at my crappy job. And so I decided I'm going to go become a real estate investor. So I decided to flip houses. Then the market crashed as I was on my first flip, like right when I bought it. And uh, I bought a duplex at the same time. So I bought a duplex, tried to flip a house, the house flip, I was working on it and I bought a duplex and I lived in half of it and I rented the other half out. And I remember walking, I remember this day actually, I just, I'm writing a book on multifamily. It won't be out for another year from now, but the beginning of the book is a story about this. And I remember standing in the driveway thinking all my neighbors were going to think I'm a drug dealer because I'm like taking cash from this other guy in this shady part of town and like walk back to my house. But I remember holding this like 650 bucks going like, shoot, like this is more than my entire mortgage payment. Like, cause I lived in, you know, I lived in half the duplex, rent the other half out. Anyway, that was like the, the aha moment was like, I could have a lot of these. Like, what if I had 10 of these or 20 of these? Like, that's a lot of money coming in. I wouldn't have to have a job and I could like travel and watch my kids grow up. So I just kept buying on the way down because I, I just was too stupid not to, I guess. It's like, I didn't, I didn't realize how to do it. I was just like, well, it's gotta be the bottom now. And so I'd buy a property. I mean, I wasn't going crazy. I wasn't buying hundreds of properties. I mean, I bought like two of my first year, I think two of my, probably like average of two a year, really for the first like four years, uh, maybe three sometimes, uh, and flipping like a house a year and then a rental or two each year. But I would, I would buy these houses to flip and then I do most of my own work. And at the end of the day, I'd clear like $0 or a couple of them I made like 10 or 15 or 20,000. And then a couple of my lost money on, or, and I was like, man, this isn't, this isn't fun. But, but at the same time, I just, I trusted, like I read a lot of real estate books. And so I trusted the philosophy or like the foundational fact that if I just hold long enough, we're going to come out of this. Like we're going to like, this is how the economy works up and down and up and down. And I knew we were down. I didn't know where the bottom was, but like I, eventually if I own all these properties, all of them are going to be lifted together with the rising tide. And that's going to help me get out of this. But I never felt like I was making money. I never like took any cash flow. Uh, I spent most of it on rehab stuff and, uh, yeah. So fast forward like seven years and I'm sitting at a Starbucks and I'm working on my personal financial statement for a bank. Cause I'm trying to get a refinance and, uh, maybe it was nine years. And it was like, just, it was just turned turn 30 at that point. So I'm like filling out this financial statement and I, I get to the bottom and it adds up, you know, all your assets, all your liabilities. And it says I have a million dollars, like 1.03 million or something. And I was like, well, shoot. Like I became a millionaire. I didn't even realize it. I thought they'd be like, you know, something cool, like bombs going off or, or fireworks. But, uh, and it, all it was, was just that you own property and then the markets go up and your loans go down and you magically become wealthy. And, uh, that was the other kind of aha moment. It was like, I want to do more of that. I just want to own more. Pro so I just started buying more and uh, larger stuff at that point.